Hi folks and welcome back. Still taking a little break from the Crosley radio, the one I was doing the de-rusting on, and decided to go ahead and build a second uh, prototype, an all-in-one capacitor outside foil or shield identifier. And uh, you can see here I've got everything together, just a small modification to the uh, circuits here for the oscillator itself, and uh, just straightforward followed the same buffer amplifier design that I used in my uh, first prototype here for the uh, receiver less my uh, pickup coil. We'll spend more on that in just a moment. Let's flip this thing on and I've wired everything the same way and I've added the uh, double pole, double throw switch here to indicate when the light actually illuminates or is the brightest I should say. Uh, that would identify the uh, foil side, and uh, you can see here I've extended the leads on an old cap. Uh, the foil side here, and uh, you can see I'm using these uh, speaker connections that allows me just to push down and remove the cap, and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes now. And you can see the light goes off, and if I flip the switch here, of course, with the switch oriented in this position, the outside foil follows. So it's that simple. Let's look at a few other uh, capacitor examples, and then we'll open this up, and I'll show you the way I laid the uh, boards out here in the prototype. I had never considered testing a safety cap, but uh, here's an X2. I don't have any X1s in this uh, particular uh, form factor. But uh, it's quite interesting here. You can uh, definitely see or identify the outside uh, foil as well, uh, being this lead here. So uh, quite interesting, and uh, I'll take note of that in my new installations going forward on these devices as well. You can see here as I vary the frequency of the oscillator, um, you can see the LED illuminate just a little bit brighter. Uh, thus, what I did notice testing some of the capacitors, certain capacitor values seem to respond better or resonate at uh, a particular frequency. So I did make a circuit change, and I'll put that in the description as I noted earlier. And I've dropped this down to um, just above 60 hertz, and I'm topping out uh, at about 2,000 hertz or so or just under that. A little problem there with my uh, potentiometer there on the uh, top end. That's why it uh, chatters there. But uh, you can see here the uh, larger capacitors here. I'm just laying it on top of my uh, new pickup coil, which we'll spend more on in just a moment. But uh, very easy to identify the uh, shield or foil side of these larger caps. The uh, lower value caps under 0.01 uh, microfarads are still uh, somewhat uh, problematic and somewhat questionable. So uh, I figure, heck, if I can't pick it up on here, then um, even if I get it wrong in the circuit, uh, probably uh, no harm will be done. Let's look at one of the uh, low value caps and I'll uh, show you a possible workaround solution if it shows up on camera. The same uh, copper foil that I'm using here as my uh, pickup, and you can see as I touch that with my lead pencil, which is conductive, you can see the LED come on and respond to the uh, signal. Uh, ditto there for my uh, finger, which you would expect. But uh, all I'm doing is just wrapping a little bit of the uh, foil around the uh, center of the capacitor, trying to keep it centered best I can and then place it on top of the uh, pickup coil. And I have been able to uh, notice or detect um, ever so slightly a little change here and identify the outside foil on some of these uh, lower value caps. Uh, let me adjust the uh, gain here and reposition this and we'll uh, play around with this one here. So you can see I've got the uh, capacitor attached and I've got it centered uh, best I can here and I'm just pressing down on my uh, pickup lead and you can see the uh, LED illuminate here and if I flip that over and again I apologize for the lighting you may not see that but the LED is just a, a touch brighter 
with the uh, foil being indicated here to this side. We'll flip this back. Let me uh, just reverse the uh, capacitor here and just make sure it follows uh, to the left here when I uh, reverse the uh, capacitor here itself just to uh, confirm my uh, results here. Okay, and if I flip the uh, switch now back to the uh, left, you can see that it does follow. And the uh, LED is just a, a little bit uh, brighter. So it is uh, still somewhat difficult to uh, discern some of the uh, lower value caps. And you can see here, I'm going to readjust the uh, gain itself. And I'm to the point there where you can see it uh, light up and then just flip the switch. And this is a uh, capacitor here you can see I've already marked and confirmed. Let's look at uh, one more I found uh, interesting where the outside label is uh, different for uh, the same capacitor value again as uh, Paul noted there on um, Mr. Carlson's lab you can't always trust the uh, orientation or the label uh, the way the capacitors are uh, denoted to be uh, consistent. So here's a, a 0 0.02 microfarad cap and uh, if you guys can see the orientation here of the uh, label on the capacitor You've got uh, 203K630 running uh, left to right here. And uh, let's flip this, and you'll see indications are the uh, foil side of the capacitor resides uh, here uh, toward the uh, T on the MET or over to the V on volt. And here's an identical uh, random capacitor. Uh, let's place it in, same orientation and uh, just see what happens here. And again, I want to make sure I have this uh, centered. And we'll flip the switch. You'll notice the light's not on, indicating the foil side should be here. We'll flip the switch and you can see indeed uh, this particular capacitor is uh, opposite to the uh, one that we just tested, so the foil side uh, being here. One other test too, the uh, orange dips are uh, easy to test as well. Let me go grab one and we'll pop this thing open as I promised. Can just lay them here and uh, flip that. I'm going to readjust the uh, gain here, and you can see quickly now that the uh, foil side uh, resides here. Let's get underneath the uh, hood here, and you guys can see how I dismounted the uh, prototype boards and uh, build off of what I've constructed to uh, perfect something that's uh, a little more engineering uh, friendly. Before we open this up here, one thing I wanted to uh, show was the uh, new uh, pickup coil. I just used a, a, a screw to uh, go through the uh, circuit board, which we'll look at in just a moment, to tie back to the uh, input connection of the uh, op amp. And I uh, later decided and tried some of the uh, copper foil here, which lays over the top of the uh, screw if that's uh, showing up right here and you can see the way that uh, my first idea of using this was to use this uh, clamp here looks like a clothespin made by Hillman I'll put that information in there if you want it but you can also clamp the uh, capacitor here and that's what I started doing and then realized I could extend the uh, foil back around and over on top and the uh, unit in most cases there's enough sensitivity that I can just lay the uh, capacitor 
uh, right on top here. The other significant change I made was really these uh, push down or push style uh, connectors here. It just made it uh, simple and easy to get the capacitors uh, in and out versus the uh, alligator clips. If you'll line this thing up, just uh, hold them down and uh, you can see how simple they uh, go through. And so it's a real nice uh, quick release and off to the next uh, capacitor. Let's uh, open this thing up real quick. Again, just keep in mind this is a uh, prototype, so there's still some things in here that are uh, well from being uh, perfected. And uh, still some uh, loose ends to wrap up, but you can see here's the uh, two separate boards, again, kind of being an all-in-one. And you can see I have the uh, oscillator uh, positioned here. And the change that I made, again, was using the uh, double pole, double throw switch to uh, redirect, you know, the positive and negative leads accordingly. The uh, 555 timer is still being used as the uh, oscillator. Uh, the one change I did make was in the uh, capacitor value, and I went up to a 250K. Uh, potentiometer and just to keep things consistent I did the gain control and the frequency control both with 250 K's versus 10 K's and as I mentioned before my uh, range now on the oscillator is uh, just above 60 Hertz up to uh, around 2000 uh, Hertz or so here's my uh, one of my ground lead connections just coming back to this point um, that needs to be uh, tidied up. I just wanted to show you this uh, real quick, but uh, that needs to be uh, tied down uh, better. And uh, you'll see two separate batteries. Uh, there's not a big drain on the batteries, but what I did notice with a, a single supply, it seemed like the uh, oscillator itself, and I didn't spend any time using uh, capacitors or anything to try to filter it out, but uh, a lot of the uh, signal from the oscillator seems to flow on the uh, VCC line on the uh, positive side so to uh, mitigate that issue quickly I just uh, threw two batteries in those are held in place with some velcro for now I uh, just threw a piece of tape down here on the back side uh, just in case anything uh, did create a uh, concern here on the height uh, this little strap right here was put in on a temporary basis just to do uh, testing to see if I wanted to use the bootstrap capacitor to increase the gain. I found that wasn't necessary. So this design here is uh, identical to the schematic that I shared uh, earlier. Here's my antenna pickup or uh, the near field pro pickup. You can see I've tried to uh, direct it as uh, close as possible here to the uh, capacitor here, which is oriented correctly to reduce uh, pickup itself directly from it. And uh, you can see it just routes uh, directly through the uh, circuit board here. There's a little uh, grommet here installed just to make sure that the uh, antenna itself here, the pickup coil, doesn't uh, touch the uh, aluminum enclosure that uh, I've mounted. And again, that's just a uh, screw in uh, place there in place. I did not use uh, coax. I'm just using a shielded audio cable here. I think there's still some opportunities to improve the uh, design there by doing a better job of uh, shielding the uh, oscillator itself from the uh, receiver section. But uh, seems to work uh, pretty well. And you can see, again, I used a uh, double pole, double throw switch um, here as well for the uh, power on and off since I'm using uh, two input uh, voltage sources here from two independent batteries. So um, that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see how I mounted the uh, potentiometers here to the board and the uh, switches and then just drilled through the enclosure here so this just pops out and is held in place by the uh, sw two switches and the uh, two potentiometers and again the only standoff or support for the receiver itself is just the um, antenna itself 
you can see there the uh, connections back to the uh, push down uh, connectors there that uh, support the uh, capacitors being tested. So folks, I just wanted to uh, show that real quick. Hopefully that uh, provides some uh, ideas or sparks some ideas. Somebody can take this and enhance it, but um, I like the all-in-one unit. Makes it uh, quick and simple to use. I'll uh, put the details in here for the enclosure that I uh, chose to use as well. Very nice, uh, heavy duty, and uh, seemed to work out uh, perfect. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, soon I'll be back on the uh, Crosley after uh, taking care of a few things here around the house. You guys take care.